Google Assistant is so powerful that it's easy to forget. It can do so many things. So I'm gonna point out some of the advanced tips and tricks for how to use Assistant on your phone next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. Use code twit30 at checkout. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Assistant. You probably already know so much about Assistant. Google's done a very good job of making Assistant top of mind as far as its digital strategy is concerned, especially its mobile strategy, smart home speakers. Uh, it's integrated into Android TV, Android Auto, and of course, the smartphone. It kind of started on the smartphone. So that's where I'm gonna to focus today. I'm gonna to show you some advanced tips and tricks with Assistant, things that you may not have heard of. Of course, there's a number of commands that I know I use on a daily basis, but hidden deeper and in conjunction with some other apps, which I'll talk about, you can do a whole lot more with Assistant. So let's dive right in. I'll show you some advanced tips and tricks with Assistant starting now. So the first thing we're going to look at is a feature called routines. You might not be familiar with routines because though it's an Assistant feature, you don't manage it through Assistant. You actually manage it through the Google Home app that I have up here. So I'm going to tap in there. And so take a look for this little button called Routines. If I tap that, it gives me quick access to some of my routines uh, that we have, uh, that we use in the house. But I'm gonna go to Manage Routines because this is what I wanna show you. What routines are, are essentially a single voice command that performs multiple assistant actions. So you tap Routines, you go into Manage Routines, and you get to here. Now, what I wanna show you, just as one example, is this commuting home voice action. There's a couple of different ways that I can summon this, but you can see if I perform this routine, then it does three actions. It tells me about my commute home, about how long it's going to take, that sort of stuff, and uh, navigates me there. Uh, it broadcasts to my Google Home speakers at my house, hey, I'm on my way home, it says Jason is on his way home. And then it plays music, and in this case, it plays a playlist of the Beatles. So let's see here. So let's see if I can go ahead and summon this and turn up my volume so you can kind of hear things as they happen, hopefully. Commuting home. All right, let's go. All right, so it's firing Driving it off. Home will take you one minute. Of course it will, I'm already home. Safe travels, Jason. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> you couldn't hear. You couldn't hear it on my Google Home, but it said, uh, broadcast from Jason, I'm on my way home. So everything fired off in sequence based on the settings that I had there. And uh, that's just one way that you can do it. You can actually select from popular, uh, from popular uh, actions, or you can kind of design your own assistant will, and then you can add an action and then it will play and then you can add media. So if you want it to play a podcast or news or whatever, that sort of thing, add, add commands. If we jump into there, I can put in any assistant command and just write it out long form there and that would work. Um, and I can do a number of them and they do have preset ones that you can select from as well. So uh, very handy, very dynamic. That's called routines and you'll find it in the Google Home app. The next feature that I'm going to show off is actually brand new as of last week. It's called Action Blocks, and it does require you to install the Action Blocks app. It's this app. So go on the Google Play Store, search for Action Blocks by Google. It is created by Google. These are essentially shortcuts to assistant commands that you can place on the home screen. And this was designed with accessibility in mind. You can see I've already created one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if maybe I can get rid of that. We'll create it from scratch. Um, it's a design with accessibility in mind for people who might have cognitive disabilities, but really anyone could use this. So take setting an alarm as an example. We're gonna create an action block. You see down here, set an alarm, command, uh, common action, setting alarm. And here, so it says set an alarm for 7 a.m. tomorrow. I do have a couple of alarm clock apps installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and expand this and say in 
sleep because my alarm clock app of choice is sleep in Android and it's shortened to sleep. All right, so there we go. I've created the voice command or the action block for this. When I go ahead and hit next, it's gonna ask me to test it. And when I test it, it's gonna pull up assistant and it's gonna run that command. And if I get the result that I'm looking for, which is 7 a.m. in sleep as Android, I could confirm it. And then I would know, and you can see the command up at the top there. I would know that that command is gonna work every time I happen to tap it. So I'm gonna return to action blocks, say, uh, did this action do what you expected? Yes, it did, absolutely. Takes me to another screen here. This is where I could select any image I wanted to. It's pulled in an alarm image. I think that's, that's handy, but really you could put anything here. And then let's say 7 a.m. alarm as the name. So this would appear on the home screen as well. Save that action block. I want to add it to the home screen. And this is the icon. It's a two by two icon added automatically. And it has been added. Now when I go to my home screen, See, where are you? There we are. There is the assistant command. I tap that. It issues the command now the second I tap it. All I have to do is hit confirm. Boom, my alarm for tomorrow morning is set for 7 a.m. It is set to not repeat, so this would be a one-time alarm. That is just one option that you can do with this new feature with the app called Action Block. So look for it and uh, create just basically shortcuts for assistant commands, very useful. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you're interested in an IT career but aren't sure which one is right for you, IT Pro TV can help. Sign up for a premium membership and let an expert guide you. With over 4,000 hours of IT training, get the certifications you need to be successful. Go to itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. That's itpro.tv slash twit. Make sure and use code twit30. IT Pro TV. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. All right, the next feature that I'm going to show off is ambient mode. And essentially what this feature does is it turns your smartphone into a smart display, similar to some of the smart displays that are on the market running assistant. Uh, basically the same assistant visualization that you might find on a smart display. However, what's interesting here is that it's limited to a certain number of devices that actually support this feature. So select Nokia, Lenovo, Sony, Xiaomi, and transient devices. And as of a few months ago, OnePlus devices back to the OnePlus 3 and 3T actually opened up this functionality. I have, of course, the OnePlus 8 Pro here, and I have the OnePlus 8 Pro's wireless charging pad, but this works also when you simply plug it in. But because I have the pad, uh, I can go ahead and set this on top of the pad. I have all the features activated. It recognizes it, and boom, it jumps right in to this assistant ambient mode, which is really handy, right? It gives you a look at your next event, uh, a look at your calendar, some a brief look at your notifications. And down at the bottom here, you can see some smart home controls. So I could turn on all my lights. I could adjust my thermostat. Depending on where your smart home is, uh, you know, it, as far as setting it up, you know, all the different features that you have baked into and linked up to Assistant, you might see different things down here. So the important thing to know here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this wireless charging dock here and uh, we can take a look inside the phone itself. Essentially, I'm going to swipe up from the corner to summon the assistant and tap that explore button. This is going to take me to another page, which you've probably seen many times with assistant. Essentially, once we get into explore, I'm going to go ahead and type in or tap on my avatar and settings. That's going to take me to a new settings page. That's more my Google account. And you see the assistant tab right there. Go ahead and tap that. And then down here under assistant devices. So I'm going to set it for this particular phone. Here's where you get the good stuff. By default on the OnePlus 8 Pro, as my example here, this ambient mode is actually deactivated. So are personalized results. So this is the way it is out of the box. So you don't even know that that extra feature is there unless you know to go digging for it. So you would want to activate ambient mode, set up any, um, any, uh, any permissions that tie into that 
personalized results. We want that active as well. That actually passes through some of these results to the assistant on the phone and to the lock screen. We want to basically open it all up so that assistant has access to all that information and can then pass it through to the screen uh, when I'm when I have this device plugged in. And once I have that all set up, you know, there's some other settings down here. You can activate photo frame on ambient display so that if I haven't done anything with assistant, it automatically plays a select Google Play or Google Photos album, and that's really nice. It, you know, looks really nice flashing all of your photos that you've uh, that you've selected. So it's a really nice feature. It's a bummer that this is not available for all Android phones, but I'd say take a look, see if you find these settings in on your phone. And if you do activate them, because then once your phone is plugged in, you get all of this extra contextualized information. It actually looks really, really nice. That is called ambient mode for assistant. All right, the next feature that I'm going to show off is how you have Assistant actually read web pages for you out loud. Now, it does not work with every web page that you encounter on your smartphone, but when it does, I got to say it's pretty awesome. So we'll go ahead and tap into Chrome, and uh, you can see this is a Verge article. Minecraft Dungeons is a lighter, more friendly, friend, uh, family-friendly take on Diablo. I'm going to summon, and then I'm going to say, hey, G, read it, or read this page works too. Read this page. All right. From The Verge, Minecraft Dungeons is a lighter, more family-friendly take on Diablo by Andrew Webster. No mining. Okay, so while it's reading, you can see it's highlighting the text that it's actually reading. It's reading it out loud in a pleasant, assistant, friendly voice. Uh, I have full control, so I, you know, it's essentially you're turning a web page into a podcast. I could skip back 10 seconds and it would take me back and it would it's already up in the title, right? Everything kind of moves along so you can follow along with your eyes depending on where you're at. I could skip forward and boom, we jump down in the article. And you can change the speed if it's just not fast enough or slow enough for you. A really cool feature. Like I said, it's really turning a web page into a podcast. And a lot of people don't even know that it can actually do this. So definitely play around with that. Then you can turn your drive time into read time as well in the same way that you would do an audiobook. Very neat. And finally, what I want to show off is a way to kind of manage the data that Assistant has, because this is definitely, you know, the, the time where we're, we're in right now where people are very, uh, very concerned or, you know, wary of the amount of data that they're sharing with Google and especially Assistant because it's voice actions and you don't just don't know what kind of data is being cataloged and all that kind of stuff to inform how Assistant works for you. So there is a command. Hey, G, that wasn't for you. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe up. That wasn't for you. Sorry, I'm deleting what I heard. Sorry. It be gone in a few seconds. Sorry, I'm deleting what I heard. It should be gone in a few seconds. If I tap this assistant activity. So basically what it's done is it's taken the last voice action or um, voice command that I've given to assistant and it deletes it from Google's history. It also gives me a button so that I can tap through and kind of manage some of these settings uh, after the fact. And you can get a list of all of your voice activity if you're looking for it. So this is today. These are some of the uh, some of the actions that have filtered through assistant in my history. You can see today I could trash them all from here if I wanted to. Um, this is something to take a look at. Choose to delete automatically. This is a feature. Right now I have it set for keep until I delete manually. So every voice action that I give to Assistant is being cataloged by Google over time. Uh, maybe you don't want it, Google to have that information. Maybe it's not even useful right? For an extended period of time. It's useful now, maybe the next couple of days, but beyond that, not so much. So Google has given you this control so that you can either keep everything there or keep your data for 18 months and delete automatically over time or trim that down to three months. Three months is, I'd say, pretty darn useful. I actually like that because it keeps things for three months, then it gets rid of it. I don't feel like I'm cataloging or archiving all of this unnecessary data. Um, it just helps you know, with peace of mind, that sort of thing. So uh, you can determine which of these settings is appropriate for how you feel about Google's access to your data. Hit next. And uh, of course, they want you to confirm it. They don't want you to... Uh, <laughs> Do I want to delete now? Yes, uh, it's going to delete now. It's going to take a look at, you know, all of those older commands and say around this time is uh, the time through which 
things are going to get deleted and boom, preferences are saved. All the old information is deleted. My activity, like I said, activity older than three months being permanently deleted. And that's totally fine by me. I feel like that's fine. That's uh, that's useful enough for the purposes of assistance kind of tailoring to my specifications. So there we go. And keep in mind the voice action. Hey, G, that wasn't for you. If it misfires, if assistant misfires and catches on a random word that you said and you're like, hey, I didn't actually summon you. You can say that wasn't for you and that'll be removed and it won't be included in the history. And I love those extra controls that assistant has now. All right. So there you have it. A number of advanced tips and tricks with assistant on your phone. Now, Google has been really good at building out its capabilities with Assistant. And they do this slowly over time. They've been working on this two, three, four years now. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, I imagine we're going to hear more about some new features coming up throughout this year. We're going to hear from Google as far as their strategy, kind of a replacement for Google I.O. with an Android beta show. And I just have a feeling we're going to learn a little bit more about what Assistant is going to do as we go forward in the next year. It's usually what they do at Google I.O. We are you know, given... A bunch of new information as far as what to expect. I think we're going to get that in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. And if we have anything major, I'll make sure to bring it here or my other show all about Android. Send me your emails, your tips, tricks, your questions, and I might integrate them into the show. I appreciate that when you do. That's hands on Android at twit.tv. You can also subscribe to the show by going to twit.tv slash HOA for hands on Android. Link out to your podcatcher of choice or link out to YouTube and subscribe there. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you next week on Hands on Android. Check out other shows here on Twit TV, including my show, Hands On Photography. On this show, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your camera as well as be a better post processor. So head on over to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe now.